Why do things continue to exist, moment after moment? Why doesn't everything just vanish? In a previous video, I considered some possible explanations briefly. In this video, I'm going to consider in greater depth the proposal that there is no explanation of persistence. Now, I'm inclined to think that the best explanation of persistence is actually in terms of necessary existence. Things persist because something must exist. However, many people have suggested instead that there is no explanation of existence or persistence. It is just a brute fact that the universe exists and that it continues to exist. I wish to examine this brute fact proposal more closely. In graduate school, I consulted hundreds of books and articles on the subject of explaining existence. I was deeply curious about this subject. In all my research, I never found what I am about to share with you in this video. In particular, in this video, I'm going to combine contemporary probability theory with a classic proposal about the persistence of existence. My goal is to reveal a certain severe problem with unexplained persistence. I'm going to do five things. First, I'll summarize the basic problem of persistence as raised by Thomas Aquinas. Second, I'll update that problem in terms of probability theory. Third, I'll clarify the more advanced elements of probability theory used in my argument. Fourth, I'll say why the argument is valuable for anyone seeking to develop a sound worldview. Fifth and finally, I would like to thank a few people who helped inspire this video. So let's start with the classic thought from Aquinas. His idea is this, suppose nothing has self-existence. Each thing can fail to exist. Then everything would have vanished by now. The idea here is that it is not likely for things to continue on and on forever from a beginningless past, assuming there is no deeper explanation of existence. If there were a deeper explanation of existence, then we could have a simple explanation for why there continue to be things. Things persist because something must exist. But if instead it is a brute fact that things exist and persist, then we have a deep puzzle. How is it that things are able to continue to be? Now you might think that this puzzle only arises if we assume that things must be upheld if they are to continue to exist. After all, if there is no expectation that things will cease to exist, then why should we need any explanation for their continued existence? Maybe things just persist and that's that. This is a reasonable thought. However, upon closer inspection, a probability problem arises. This problem requires no assumptions at the outset about whether things can or cannot persist on their own. In fact, this probability problem is built on the principle of neutrality, where we leave open anything we have no evidence for or against. We can state the probability problem in terms of the following argument. Premise 1. If there is no explanation of persistence, then the probability that there continues to be something, moment after moment, approaches zero as the number of moments approaches infinity. Premise two, if there is an explanation of persistence, such as in terms of necessary existence, then the probability that there continues to be something, moment after moment, is much closer to one. In fact, the probability is one in the case where something has self-existence. That is, it exists because it cannot not at all in any times. What follows from these premises is this. Actual persistence strongly disconfirms, that is, makes less probable, root, unexplained persistence. Let me further unpack this argument by offering four clarifications. First, we can think of probabilities in terms of degree of expectation. Philosophers sometimes call this epistemic probability which means reasonable degree of expectation. It is important to see here that what matters is not the way the world actually is, how likely things are by their nature, 
but rather what you expect. To help us to think about this, imagine you toss a coin, and it's a fair coin. Then you'll have an equal expectation that the coin comes up heads as that it comes up tails. And given this equal expectation, it's appropriate for you to assign a 0.5 probability that it comes up heads. Notice that you'll give heads a 50% chance even if the world happens to be deterministic. In other words, even if the coin was determined to come up heads just by the nature of the toss and the laws of physics, the point is that you have no idea which side it will come up, and therefore your degree of expectation that it will come up heads is still 0.5, because you don't know which way the world is going to determine the coin to come up. The second thing to understand about the argument is that it uses conditional probabilities. We are considering how likely something would be given a certain hypothetical situation. Conditional probabilities are part of ordinary reasoning. Think of the coin. Let us say that the coin persistently comes up heads 100 times. You could then consider how likely that would be on the hypothesis that the coin is fair. On the fair coin hypothesis, each toss has a 0.5 expectation of coming up heads. So the probability that the coin persistently comes up heads 100 times in a row is going to be very low on the hypothesis that the coin is fair. The appropriate degree of expectation is 0.5 to the power of 100, which is very low indeed. By contrast, on the hypothesis that the coin is heads on both sides, let's say, then the coin would be expected to come up heads persistently, or cannot not come up heads. The point here is that you don't have to actually observe that the coin is heads on both sides. The observation of persistence in coming up heads is itself sufficient to give you evidence against the brute unexplained heads. A third clarification. I make no assumption whatsoever about whether things would or would not persist in the absence of a self-existent foundation. In fact, without any explanation for persistence, I have no expectation one way or the other. It's completely open, 50-50. For this very reason, I have no way to assign anything but a 50% probability of persistence from one moment to the next, given the brute persistence theory. Remember, these are conditional probabilities. Think again about the coin. Each toss could come up heads or tails as far as I know. Yet, the more it persists in coming up only heads, the more reason I have to think that there is some reason for this. That is, there is something about the world that predisposes this coin to persist with heads. The same is so for existence. The more that reality persists in being non-empty, and having something rather than nothing, the more reason I have to think that there is some reason for this. That is, there is something about reality that predisposes it to persist in being non-empty. A fourth and final clarification. The conclusion of the argument that actual persistence makes brute persistence less likely follows from the two premises using Bayes' theorem which, by the way, was yet to be recognized in Aquinas' time. Bayes' theorem allows us to update our degree of expectation about a hypothesis given input conditional probabilities. The basic idea is that any piece of data disconfirms a given hypothesis when that data would be less likely on that hypothesis than on some alternative hypothesis. For example, when you see a coin come up heads 100 times in a row, you have data that disconfirms the fair coin hypothesis because your observation of persistent heads is less likely on the fair coin hypothesis than on some other hypothesis, such as that the coin is heads on both sides. Similarly, when you see that things continue to exist moment after moment, you have data that disconfirms the brute persistence hypothesis, because your observation of existence is less likely on the brute persistence hypothesis than on some other hypothesis, 
such as that things cannot not be, or at least that something cannot not be. If I'm right about that, then our observation of continued existence provides some reason to think that there is an explanation of continued existence. The persistence of existence is not just root. Here are four reasons I think this argument from probability is significant. First, it takes a classical thought about existence and formulates it in the more rigorous terms of contemporary probability. Second, the argument follows a scientific model for progress and deep question. Rather than give a metaphysical proof, I give a gentle reason in the form of empirical confirmation. We use persistent existence as the thing that we observe. Now, there may be different explanations for that. And I don't say that you absolutely must reject root persistence. Rather, my argument invites truth seekers to seriously consider alternatives because reason reveals a reason to do so. That is, it reveals a reason to think that root persistence is less likely given the continued persistence of existence. A third reason my argument is valuable, I think, is that seeing the problem of persistence in terms of probability is not itself trivial. Many people have missed it. I missed it, even after many years of studying the arguments about existence. So those who come this far in their thinking have come farther than many, and that's significant. And the final consideration is that the argument is an important part of the larger project of developing a sound worldview using the light of reason. In closing, I wish to thank all of you for watching this video. The concepts in play are not easy. If you've come this far, I congratulate you. I wish to offer a special thanks to those of you who supplied helpful comments on previous videos. Your comments were offered in the spirit of constructive criticism and productive dialogue. Thank you for that. The purpose of these videos is to help people develop a sound understanding of reality using the light of reason. I'm convinced that a well-designed, reason-based worldview contributes to a well-designed life. So thank you sincerely for contributing to this effort.